Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Pett and I am an informatics PhD student at Indiana University. I'm going to be talking about a new type of music paradigm, flexible media, um, which combines a live acoustic soloist with responsive tape-based electronics. So as you're going to see on the next slide, the technology behind flexible media is nothing new and has been described in a lot of previous literature. Instead, I want to focus on the more social aspects of how composers and performers interact with this new technology. If you have any questions about the more technical specifics of this project, please feel free to ask in the Q&A. The idea of flexible media is inspired by two things. First of all, it's based on a genre of Western art music where a live acoustic soloist plays with pre-recorded tape. Here, the electronic part functions like a karaoke track, and the live soloist is responsible for synchronizing their part with the tape. Another important component is automated accompaniment systems. This is a relatively new technology where pre-recorded accompaniment, usually piano or orchestra, is time-stretched in real time to follow a live soloist. The result is an accompaniment track that will adjust its playback speed to match the soloist rather than the other way around. So as you can see, these two concepts have a lot of interesting parallels. Using an automated accompaniment system, why not replace the piano or orchestra accompaniment with a tape-based accompaniment? So how did we do this? We adapted three fixed media and live soloist works by composer Jakob TV to work with the Informatics Philharmonic automated accompaniment system. So these pieces have a lot of range. For example, Garden of Love is very metronomic, while Farewell Feathered Friends is extremely free. In addition to the pieces themselves being quite varied, the performers also came from very different backgrounds. Um, they have different levels of experience with the instrument and different levels of familiarity with the fixed track. For example, Connie Frigo was actually the person who initially premiered Billy over 10 years ago. These differences ended up having a big effect on how each performer interacted with the flexible media and their impressions about its strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so I'm going to start with Garden of Love. Let's first listen to an excerpt of the fixed version. As you can hear, Garden of Love is a very fast driving piece. A big question that Jakob TV had during the adaptation process was whether this type of really metronomic piece was a good fit for flexible media. He said that he chose the tempo in the fixed track for a reason, and flexibility could also have the potential of detracting from that really important metronomic precision. Let's take a listen to Wes Taylor playing the same snippet. So Wes had some very illuminating perspectives about his experience with using flexible media. One big aspect was how it helped him as a learning tool. So Wes had only started learning Garden of Love two weeks before trying it with a flexible version. He commented that the flexible version let him focus on aspects of playing other than just staying in sync with the tape, um, such as playing in tune or being able to hit high notes. He also said that being able to play the piece at a slower tempo let him learn a lot about how his part interacted with the accompaniment lines. Especially telling was a quote that he learned more about the piece in his two hours with InfoFill than his two weeks working with the fixed media. From a performance perspective, Wes was a bit less enthusiastic saying that if he were an audience member, he would still prefer the effect of the fixed track to that of the flexible track. We, however, think that another benefit of the flexible Garden of Love arrangement is the fact that it lowers the piece's difficulty and barrier to entry. Garden of Love was actually originally written for oboe and tape, but even very few professional oboists are willing to program the piece in concert because it's so hard on endurance and leaves very little time to breathe. While the end product wouldn't be as exact as using the fixed track, playing with a flexible track would give a very close approximation while making performance more feasible. So moving on to Billy, Billy is very different from Garden of Love. Um, it's jazz-based and has a more free and laid-back feel. 
So when working with this type of music, Connie Frigos found that if she made small tempo adjustments, those adjustments could translate into very interesting changes in the piece's mood. So here's a good example. I'm going to start by playing a clip of the fixed track, which is at a steady tempo, and then the same clip with a flexible track, where Connie first speeds up, then slows down. So the first version ends up sounding very calm and deliberate, while the second gives the impression of anxiety and then release. <laughs> So Jakob TV was also very excited about the potentials of using flexible media with Billy. He commented that during a performance, a player can act as a stage director, deciding what specific mood they wanted to convey in different parts of the piece. Interestingly, both Jakob TV and Connie had a very different perspective from Wes when it came to flexible media's role in learning a work. Connie, as a saxophone professor, was especially worried about how students could abuse this technology. She said that the reason she was able to freely change her tempo was because she was so familiar with the fixed track. And this familiarity let her know which changes would be appropriate and which would be contrary to the composer's intention. Lastly, I'm going to move on to Farewell Feathered Friends. Let's take a listen to the fixed version. As you can probably hear, this piece is very free. For much of the piece, there's no clear beat, and most of the accompanied track consists of bird song, which inherently doesn't have clear rhythm. This makes coordinating with the fixed track very, very challenging. So to play the fixed track, you practically have to memorize where every bird chirp happens and which of your notes should coordinate with which parts of each chirp. So now let's take a listen to Jamie's version with the flexible track. So because Farewell Feathered Friends is such a new composition, Jamie actually started her learning process with the flexible track. One thing we noticed was that compared to Connie and Wes, she had much less familiarity with how her part fit in with the accompaniment. In situations where she was unsure about the piccolo's relationship with the bird chirps, um, we noticed that when we pointed out the points of synchrony, um, she ended up feeling a lot more comfortable and sounding a lot better in those sections. But as you can probably hear from her recording, a large advantage of being unencumbered by the necessity to synchronize with a fixed track is that her version sounded a lot more free. She even said that the informatics philharmonic lets her lead and express the emotions in the piece without feeling locked into the same tempo. Um, from our perspective, the idea that performer comfort allows for more expressive playing seems to be one of the biggest advantages of using flexible media technology. We certainly hope that more researchers, especially those studying music education, are going to continue exploring the interesting effect that flexible media has on how a performer learns music. Um, and we also hope that people continue looking into more expressive possibilities that flexible media could bring. From a composition side, we also want to keep looking into how automated accompaniment technology can be used in music where the soloist plays with electronics generated in real time instead of a pre-made track. Currently, we've built a system that sends a soloist's future note predictions to an external max patch. Um, which gives the ability to automatically schedule synchronous live effects with a soloist. This type of technology has the potential to make 
um, live electronic collaborations a lot easier to operate, as well as offering exciting new musical possibilities. If anyone is interested in working with this type of technology, please let us know.